it is another day of hacking on the HTML tokenizer and um, today I want to take a break from implementing the tokenizer steps and I instead want to focus on making the uh, program more scalable. Um, something that I have mentioned in a previous video is that right now we assume all input text to be ASCII only so every character is one single byte. And this is of course not really great because uh, Unicode exists and Unicode is very widespread. I think like 99% of the web is in UTF-8 or something, up to 100% in English. And um, it's, it's not safe to assume that every character would be a single byte because UTF-8 is a variable length encoding. So any a, a single character can have any length between one byte to four bytes. So what I want to do it today is write a simple string implementation that manages a byte buffer which contains valid UTF-8 and that um, can provide some basic utility functions like maybe a start with function or a character iterator, something like that. Something basic that would allow us to um, deal with UTF-8 encoded data. Now, the ZIG standard library does actually have a Unicode module with some very, very basic UTF-8 functions and UTF-16 also, but we're not going to worry about that because we are only going to deal with UTF-8. But it uh, critically does not provide a UTF-8 string type. So all of these functions take a byte buffer as the argument and then I assume they error out if the byte buffer is not valid UTF-8, I'm not actually sure. Um, yeah, probably. And I don't want to do that. I want to have a byte buffer, a, a type that contains a byte buffer which is guaranteed to be UTF-8. So whenever we use it, we don't have to worry about any UTF-8 uh, encoding errors. So we can we can use these functions internally, but I do want to um, build my own string type and of course my own character type. So let's, I guess, just get started and create a source slash maybe string.sig file. So it, that should be a string type and then we can have a char type. I wonder if the zig naming convention is that it should be uppercase or lowercase. Let me look, actually look that up in a bit. Um, Oh, I, I forgot to mention one great thing about Zig is that we have don't have to modify a lot of the code because um, the code that we already implemented makes use of these, these switch state statements where we switch on a single character, which um, as of right now is a single byte, and then we can check if it's an ampersand. And this syntax here, the ampersand, is actually um, just a compile time integer, but we can expand it to a... So right now it's being used as a singular byte, but we can also expand it to be a U32, so a U8 um, character, a UTF-8 character, my bad. So we don't have to modify these switch statements at all, I believe. I'm not quite sure about that, but I, I hope so. Now um, we have a character type and then a string, which should be a yeah it should be a struct a wrapper around a oh right we need, we need an array list so we can import standard so that's standard no not standard I think and then the struct is basically just a wrapper around um, an array list of of bytes Like this and we can we can create a string so pub function maybe new yeah new sounds good and then what we pass to new are the bytes so um, should that be I guess we would so I want to use this function to create a string from a string literal so something like like foobar and I want to pass this uh, into the string new function so I guess this is fine 
and this will then uh, clone its own copy of these bytes. And it can fail if it is not valid UTF-8, which we are going to check with one of these functions in here from the ZIG standard library. I think there's one that validates. UTF-8 valid code point. Oh, it's actually just a U21. Interesting. Um, why would... All oh, right, because um, I guess I should also maybe explain how UTF-8 works. So um, the way UTF-8 encoding works is that, um, first of all, it's uh, ASCII is a subset of UTF-8. So any ASCII encoded text is also valid UTF-8 encoded text. And as I mentioned before, it's variable length. So um, the first byte determines how long the of also the first byte of a character determines how long that character will be. If it starts with a zero, then it's just a single byte character, and you have seven bits left to encode the actual character. That's just ASCII, because ASCII is anything from zero to one hundred and twenty-seven. And then if the byte starts with two ones followed by a zero, then it is a two byte character and you, all of these X bits represent the bits used to encode the character and so on. If you have three ones, then it's, this, it's a three byte character and four ones followed by zero is a four byte character. So not actually too hard to implement and I guess uh, it's 21 uh, bits maximum because uh, you have all of these descriptor bits that um, don't encode actual character data. So you only have 21 bits left for the actual Unicode character. Um, mm -hmm. UTF-8 valid as slice. This is what I was looking for and this returns a boolean. I suppose true if it's valid. So this itself and this can fail or it can return a valid string and if standard if so if it is an invalid string if it's not standard dot unicode dot utf8 validate slice the bytes then we want to error out. So I think I ne need to create my own error enum for that in ZIG, but I'm not quite sure how to do that. So let's quickly look it up. Um, do, 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 do. I think there's an error chapter in here. Errors. Right, I can create my own errors just like an enum. I wonder if there's an underlying difference between an error and an enum. Probably because you can unify error types. Right, you can make a subs a set of errors consisting of the allocation errors and the file open errors, and then it would have four different variants. I guess the out of memory would be contained twice. Oh, I, I suppose merge same names are just merged together. That's quite neat, actually. Okay, um, so we need an error, or can we maybe use an error from the UTF-8 from the Unicode module in ZIG itself, because it does have these UTF-8 decode errors. <laughs> Where are these stored? Not in this game of 403 forbidden, that's curious. Undefined. I suppose that's maybe a bug in the implementation, perhaps. Not sure why it would be undefined. Hmm. In the implementation of Autodoc, I mean, not the not the standard library. I'm sure the standard library is just fine. Okay, but what's the difference between UTF-8 decode and UTF-8 decode 2? Decodes the UTF-8 code point and bytes length must be equal to UTF byte sequence length. Catch unreachable. Yeah, that's the autodoc seems quite buggy because this is a code block, and I, I guess that should be formatted. 
if you already know the length at compile time. So the I can call this at compile time. Wait, there's even more functions. UTF decode. Okay, um, that's an, probably another reason not to use too much of this code, because that is not a good naming scheme, especially if there's no documentation for three of the four functions. So you don't even know what the difference really is. I guess I could read the source code, but I'm not going to do that right now. const unicode error equals error invalid utf uh, i guess the naming scheme is like with enums no it's not actually it is camel case invalid utf8 and then this function how do i unify error sets because this the new function it can either error out because we're out of memory when allocating a slice a string or it can um error out because the bytes that we passed on it's valid utf8 so how do i unify error sets the error set type um Merging error sets. All right, how do they do doc comments? Contains the errors from both sets. Doc comments on the left hand side, override doc com comments on the right hand side. That's a bit messy. But I guess it's fine. And can I then do something like, can I do this in place? Um, so it would be a const string create error equals unicode error or what's the allocation error? Um, mem allocator. I need an allocator error. std mem allocator error. Okay. std mem allocator error. So this can create a string create error. Return Unicode error dot invalid UTF eight. Okay, so if it is valid UTF eight, then we're good to go and we can create a string from it. So we want to create an array list that contains a copy of these bytes. Right? Yeah, we want to create a copy of the bytes. Mm. I wonder if this is a good way to handle it because we might want to, to, if we have bytes that we want to create a string from and we don't need the bytes afterwards, then this would be an unnecessary copy. But I'm not going to worry about that for now. So let's find out how we can create an array list that contains bytes. I guess the right place to look would be the array list function itself. Oh, of course, we need the allocator and function. Allocator is std mem allocator, and then this, of course, simplifies down to allocator.error. And the new function allocates, so it needs an allocator, which is the allocator. Okay, great. So add one allocated slice for an ISA API. Oh, 
So this is a getter for the for the slice. Um, for a nicer API, items.len is the length, not the capacity. I don't really like the standard library documentation because this tells me nothing. I don't know what the function does. I mean, I suppose it returns the allocated slice. Okay, that's fairly obvious, but I'm, I don't understand this doc comment. Oh well. Append slice. Append items of allocates more memory as I But can I? I mean, th this looks like a good function to call. And can I perhaps from own slice? Okay, what's the difference between a slice? What? I'm confused. What what does this mean? Yeah, uh, the standard library documentation is a, a bit arcane, maybe. But I suppose it takes ownership of the past slice. The slice must have been allocated with allocator. Yeah. Okay, that means that. Okay, I suppose this is a nicer way to do it. We can have a a pub function allocate um, that allocates just bytes, and that one is going to take the allocator, and that one can also produce the string creator. And this function, the new function, is not going to take an allocator because it's going to take ownership of the bytes. Takes ownership of the past byte slice. And this function is going to copy the copies the past byte slice and allocates a new string. Okay. And um, I wonder if it's ever going to cause a problem that we, we might not have a single allocator in the program, right? And um, the bytes that are passing here must have been allocated with the same allocator that we used to to deallocate the string at some point. But uh, that's something to worry about later, definitely. Okay. If not standard. Okay. Um, so this should, of course, validate it. And this one should clone the bytes and then call new on it. And this one can only create, uh, only cause, no, it cannot cause an allocator error, it can only cause a Unicode error. Okay. Um, so this is going to... This one is going to create an array list. Um, std dot array unmanaged dot. Um, we want a. What was the function called from own slice? Yeah, right. From own slice and the slice is bytes. And this is not going to allocate. That should be it, I believe. We just do this. And then this function needs to, to copy the bytes and then call new. Okay, so how do I how do I copy a slice? How do I heap allocate? Um mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm sure there's a nice pattern for this. Maybe in the allocator somewhere. 
coming from Rust, it's, it's uh, quite difficult to think about allocation constantly. Okay, I suppose I can just just allocate something and then if it fails, die. <laughs> um, const copied bytes equals try allocator dot alloc. We want to allocate u8s and bytes dot len of them, and then we call std mem copy, I believe. Copy. Mem. I said mem somewhere in there is a mem copy function, I believe. Concat, no, I want to copy. Copy. Use at mem copy if the arguments do not overlap. All right, so I need to look in here for the mem copy. That's a compiler built in function. All of these at functions are compiler built functions. And there's there it is mem copy. This function copies from one region of memory to another. We have a multiple slice, multiple memory pointer. Why does source have to be mutable? Okay, I, I can I can work with this. Of course, the copy bytes must be array, and then we can do at mem copy copied bytes, bytes. Is that, does that do the job? I think so. Cool. And then we can try to use um, self.new from the copied bytes. Okay. And then let's also try and can I how do I format a UTF-8 I think in the Unicode module there was something about um, code formatting I'm looking to write a format implementation ah, yeah, there right that is format Unicode code point so we give it a character Okay, so I suppose the um, the character type I used is actually a U twenty one inside the standard library. So I guess we can deal with that. So let's create an iterator over all the characters. What do I need to? Mm. I wonder if the Unicode does it, does it have any kind of Unicode format stuff? Returns a formatter for a UTF-8 string, UTF-16 string. Given the first, um, UTF-8 count code points. I suppose that's nice. See here, it would be nice to to see um, when this function will error out. I suppose it will error out if there's any um, invalid UTF-8 in there, but I'm not sure if that's the only one. Okay. Um, so when will this return error? Truncated input. Okay, so this is if it's not valid UTF-8. And I believe that's UTF-8 decode. I suppose that will fail if it's not UTF-8. Okay, so this function will only fail if um, we give it invalid UTF-8, which we cannot because our string only contains valid UTF-8. So let's just create a leg. Um, turns the length of 
returns the number of code points within the string. This is an O of N operation because it is Unicode and we have to basically iterate over the entire string to find out how many characters there are. Though we can give an upper and lower estimate in terms of uh, O of 1, but that doesn't matter for now. That's like hyper optimization. Okay, so this will always return a use size, it cannot fail. And then we just call std unicode utf8 count code points with self dot bytes. And or else unreachable. Is there a nicer way to, to write or else unreachable with maybe a panic message? Unreachable code. So is this um, so this is not an assertion, okay? I think there was some kind of panic. So why did it add a string code to make it possible? So um, I think there was some kind of panic function, like Rust's panic that, oh wait, using namespace, I don't know that one. Oh, this, ah, this is really useful. So it's basically uh, import everything. Um, keyword result location semantics to do at documentation very useful I am still just looking for unreachable there yes. unreachable and it's a call to panic so there is a panic okay. and in fast and small we don't do that Okay, so where can I learn more about panic? Gimme, gimme. Panic, panic, panic. At panic, that works. So that's a compiler built in function. And where is it? There it is invokes the panic handler function. By default, the panic handler calls the public panic function is both in the root source file, or if there's not one specified, the standard built-in default panic from standard built-in sig. Generally, it is better to use std debug panic. However, at panic can be useful for two scenarios. From library code. Um, Hmm. Uh, so I. Why would I ever not use at panic? Because of course, if I have defined something in, in a root source file, my own custom panic handler, then I I want it to be used. That's why I defined it. So why would I ever not do that? I don't see the point of std debug panic. Of, of using std debug panic instead of add panic. Either way, I'm, I'm not going to worry about panicking for now. It's, it's fine to have an unreachable in here. <laughs> okay. What does add select do? Select element wise from A or B based on pred if pred is true, though. Oh, that's. So it's like a mix function. Cool. Either way, that uh, all of that doesn't really matter for now. Mm, 
what I do want is a print implement, a format implementation for um, the string. So how do I? If you have eight encode. The formatting of the documentation is atrocious, to be honest. See the code point out the buffer to write to. And returns the number of bytes written out. Okay, fair. Okay, but there's no format implementation if I am if that's correct. Returns a formatter for a UTF-8, 16, little Indian string, but is, is there no equivalent for UTF-8? FMT. No, it's not formatter. Hmm, that's quite annoying. That is really annoying, actually. <laughs> Maybe I can just don't print the bytes and my terminal will figure it out, perhaps. Oh, I should not call unreachable here. <laughs> that is very unsafe. I should add panic. Um, Tag format uh, does not take any uh, does not take any format specifiers. Yeah, I that is a very bad use of unreachable, and the same of course for the doc type. I mean, at some point I might want to take uh, formatters. I wonder if I've did the, I've done this anywhere else, <laughs> because that is like ridiculously unsafe. That's undefined behavior if you try and add a formatter. That's not good. Yeah, at some point I should probably just grab font reachable. Um. Okay. So, what do I do now? I want to somehow print a UTF-8 string. Yeah, right, I wanted to look at the format implementation to see how that one worked. Um, so the format implementation just... Hmm. What happens if I pass something that is not ASCII to the string format? Um, I suppose that's documented in the format module, probably. Formatter. It would be really nice if there was some better formatting here. STD format. Okay, I'm looking for the format function. Oh wait, there's a bunch of, of nice FMT functions here, but I don't think I can Oh, format ASCII character, format buffer, format float decimal. I wonder if this could be useful. Format text. Um, so does this does this um, assume ASCII? Check format format return the format buffer. Okay, sure. Um, Let's just look at the documentation for format. Yeah, string for pointer to many is put as okay eight. Uh, print as a string, C string using zero termination for slices of U8. Print print the entire slice as a string without zero termination. Output integer as an UTF-8 sequence integer type must have twenty one bits at max. Oh. Um. 
Um, can I do a slice of of the? Nah, that's not great. Mm. I wonder if this is implement how this is implemented. So where's there must be some kind of match on the format arguments, right? And where's the argument? Oh, so we call format type. Huh. Kind of hard to understand this, but I suppose I can just like test it. I mean, it doesn't hurt. So let's add a format implementation. Takes all of these, and the string formatter does indeed not take. Um, actually, I suppose, do we want to take, nah, let, let, let's not take an argument for now. And then the string so should just be um, this, and the single argument is false. Hmm. In this case, we basically don't even need the format implementation now. So I don't think this is going to work. I'm very skeptical, but I mean, we can certainly try it out. Now the question becomes, how do we do that? Um, by testing it in main.sig. Main.sig, of course. Okay, so we don't want to create and run the tokenizer. Instead, we want to um, allocate the string. So let's first import the string module. Const string equals at import string .sig. and then from that we want to import the string type. S string dot um, allocate and please allocate uh, the string and the string bar and of course this can fail so let's try and then I want to print this so I do std debug print mm. please print me this string and the new line after it just to be nice yeah like this this is not going to compile. I was right. Oh, that's even just an error from a previous video <laughs> because I didn't compile last time. There's a semicolon missing in here and in the string rig at line 25, there's also a semicolon missing here. I'm still using the Rust syntax where you can avoid the return and the semicolon. Yeah, down here as well. But I guess return is actually a bit more explicit. 23, I messed that up. And I should also not use the arrow when returning things. Where did I use the arrow? In the tokenizer. Line 496. Yeah, that is still Rust syntax that I have to get rid of. Ambiguous use of and app. Of, of course. Um, that's something that I really, really like about SIG. And to be honest, I don't quite understand why no other language does this, because it's 10 times as readable. And this, of course, doesn't work. Does this work? Comparison operators can't be changed, okay. Um, because uh, doing comparisons like this with and and or literally written out as 10 times more readable than ampersand ampersand or bar bar. 
I don't understand why Zik is the only language that I'm aware of at least that does this. So th these should all be public because they are part of a public interface and it, I think I can get rid of the character for now. Okay, um, string.allocate. Expected two arguments formed one. Of course, you cannot allocate without having an actual allocator. That would be quite useful. No field or member from own slice. Right, I need to actually call the function. Mm -hmm. That's just something from Zig that I have to get used to because array list unmanaged is not actually a type a function expected a semicolon after a statement of course this is also the wrong syntax I'm still thinking in the wrong language and then use of undeclared identifier in the file line 454 yep I want to emit the less than sign at the end of that okay and now we have mm -hmm. right i guess this can be const um in the in the allocate function because we are not going to modify the original bytes right maybe i believe expected tuple or struct argument found a string a string as a struct. Hmm. Um, I guess I have to dereference it. Yeah, of course, because it's, it's a pointer. Invalid format type string for the array list unmanaged. Okay, so this is not going to work. I need to be a bit more precise. Um, so dot uh, bytes dot items. So we do actually print the string fine, but then we leak memory because, of course, we don't have a D in it routine. So we should implement that. D in it. Um, we want to D in it ourselves. And we need the allocator that was used to allocate the string. Tor. And this cannot fail because in the D allocation does not fail. And then we just call self.bytes.d in it with this allocator. And that should fix that. It does not. Why do we still leak memory? We reach unreachable code. How does that happen? Oh, right, because um, we did have leaks memory address so this one was leaked and what does that backtrace mean string to allocate uh, oh uh, of course we we have to actually call the dnit function s dot dnit with um with what with the allocate gpa Bit confusing that the allocator is called GPA in the root, and it cannot be a var because we want to deallocate it, and that is going to change it. Okay, so that is an ASCII string. That's nice, but now what happens if I put a non-ASCII character in there, like these ones? It works just fine. That's cool. What happens if I put a 00, zero in there? So this is no longer valid UTF-8. It works fine. Why does this work fine? Is it maybe UTF valid UTF-8? No, there's no way. Two zero bytes in the middle of a string can't be valid UTF-8. So why do you not error out here? 
and more importantly, why does the, the string printing still work completely fine? Is it maybe just null bytes? But now I'm really confused. Um, the string should error out if it is not a valid UTF-8 slice, which this is clearly not, right? And I can just put a x0 in here. And now it isn't valid for sure. There's no way. UTF-8 slices. Huh? I am really confused now. Hmm. Why would that be the case? I mean, it still prints everything just fine. Um, wait a minute, what's the ASCII capital A? Exit 65. Okay, what happens if I put a 65 in here? Wait, what? Uh, oh, because. Ah, of, of course, it's it's hexadecimal. Um, so, and uh, this one is a decimal number. Okay, so it just ignores any invalid UTF-8. But why does it do that? Didn't ignore the 65 even though um, can we maybe just print the bytes once to, s to see what they look like um, after that of course copy bytes cannot format a slice Without a specifier, I want to print it as any. Okay. So um, there is a zero in there. There is a one in there, and the our implementation just completely ignores that. And for some reason, the UTF-8 validates validate slice function also does not catch it which seems weird to me because that feels like something a UTF-8 validate slice function should catch. Maybe I'm using it wrong. UTF-8 validate slice. So it does not have any documentation. What does it do? Um, it iterates over the length and for every character it oh and but what happens um, so it at each point, it um, tries to find out how long the next character is. And if it is a valid character length, then we execute this block. If it is not, then we just return false. Now, why does this um, work if we have a block that is... Oh, of course, because... Um <laughs> I'm just being ridiculous. Because, of course, um, the zero bytes in there are entirely valid UTF-8. They are just not printable. Uh, UTF-8 does not mean that the characters are printable. So how can we construct some invalid UTF-8? Um, let's construct an invalid UTF-8. So 0b... Nothing can ever start with a single one zero, 
right? So let's add one, two, three, four, five, six in there and get the hex of that. And I believe this should be invalid UT effect. This should not be um, valid because um, it starts with a one zero. And as we've seen on Wikipedia here before, um, UTF-8 bytes either start with a single zero or t at least two ones followed by a zero, but never one zero, one one followed by a zero. <laughs> Bit confusing. And hopefully this should error out now. We are leaking memory again. Why are we leaking memory? Um, reached unreachable code. Okay, first of all, why do we not see an error? Oh, I suppose this is memory management. I'm learning about memory management. If I allocate and then this fails, uh, if this one fails here, then um, we need to deallocate the memory again. Yeah, right. So, um, if self.new. So if we successfully created this, all oh right, there's an, a keyword for this, I believe. It's called error defer. There's a keyword reference somewhere in here. Yeah, right. Um, error defer. Defer and error defer. Error defer will execute an expression when control for leaves the current block. If the function returns an error, the error defer expression can capture the unwrapped value. Oh, there's an entire chapter for it. Um, which evaluates if and only if the function returned with an error from the block. You get robust error handling. Um, I agree, that is very nice. So I can still, as before, return this, but then I can do a Air defer allocator dot free. Uh, what's the API for that? Um, allocator std memory allocator uh, for free. I just uh, pass it a type. Yeah, I just pass it anything and uh, into it. Quite nice. And now this should no longer, it should, should still error out because um, we did give it an invalid UTF-8. Error is ignored. No, you're supposed to return that. Okay. And, ah, right. Now we get an invalid UTF-8 error. That is. That is very nice. I like that a lot. Okay. Um, kind of embarrassed myself there because I thought non-printable characters were not UTF-8, but it happens. I'm going to leave it in. I think that's just part of programming, making stupid mis mistakes like that. Okay. Um, so this is quite nice. I should get used to using the this keyword here. Is there maybe another place in the code base where I forgot about the allocation in, in case of an error? I don't think right now. Yeah. Okay. And of course, in the main zig, I could also have used defer to deinitialize it, which would maybe have been nicer. So now we have um, a basic UTF-8 string type. Let's. Um, Add some documentation here. I guess I can um, copy the documentation from the array list. <laughs> Although maybe the um, the uh, standard library documentation is not the best example. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
Where's the DNS? DNS. Release all the located. Okay. I could have come up with that on my own. I thought they maybe had some really smart phrasing there, but nope. Okay. Um, so what other utility functions do we maybe want to have? We want to be able to iterate over the code points. Notably in UTF-8 code points are not equal to characters. So I um, do explicitly want to call it a code point iterator. Pop function code points and that will return an iterator over the code points. And I think that's provided in the standard library in the Unicode uh, module, right? UTF, yeah, right, UTF-8 iterator. And how do we get that? UTF, uh, where, how do we get one of these? Um, next code point. How do I create one? Uh, do, 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 do. I just want to get an iterator. Oh, so I suppose I just create one and there's going to be a constructor function for this, right? Mm -hmm. There has to be a constructor function. Or not, I guess. Um, oh, there's even a replacement character. But I'm going to um, create my own. <laughs> okay, so the type that we want to return is std unicode utf8 iterator. Let's see. Uh, Unicode is. Now let, let's not import the Unicode module because we're kind of creating our own Unicode stuff in here. So we are going to return an std Unicode UTF-8 iterator. And we will just create one here UTF-8 iterator. And we are the bytes are going to be our bytes. Um, mm -hmm. Return an iterator over the code points in the string. The string must outlive the iterator because the iterator holds a reference to the um, the um, underlying memory but it does not own that memory so if we deallocate the string while the iterator is still active that's going to be undefined behavior okay um, dot bytes that's just our bytes self dot bytes and dot i is zero right yeah and then we want to return that Okay, um, I think that should work. And then let's do this with, with the fur just in case we're gonna forget. And then let's print all the characters in the in the string. So the code points is s dot code points. That's the function we just created. And is there something like a while let um, optional? Probably has to be. Um, so we want to iterate over the iterator for as long as th this returns not null. And I, I assume that there is some kind of pattern for this because uh, that seems like something that you would need a lot. While with optionals, exactly. Um, while eventually null sequence. Yeah, exactly. While code points dot, what's the function called? Next code point. Code point. 
out point and we want to std debug print um, what was the format specifier for a single utf8 thing format std format format for a single utf8 type integer type must have 21 bits at max okay so it's u and then we want a new line and we want to format the code point okay i think that should be it um of course i use the rust syntax again because i just can't seem to get rid of it i mean to be fair it is kind of confusing that the function body uh, the function signature or rather the the arguments are immediately followed by the return type without anything else i i'm not sure if i like that and of course the bytes are just the items and it is invalid utf8 because i did not fix the string i really like that though that it just panics Perhaps it could panic at compile time. Okay, cool. Now we have an iterator over the code points. So that is something that we could integrate into the, the tokenizer. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And no, of course we can't create a string at compile time because it's, it involves allocation. I'm just being stupid. Let's, let's add to this. Let's add a single space in here. Okay, quite nice. And then I want something else that I might want to have. I guess I should start by. I could write tests for this, but I'm not sure I, that I actually want to do this now. It's kind of a pain, but perhaps I should. Yeah, it's, it's probably also nice to get used to SIG tests. So how do tests work in SIG? All right, they were at the top, which I didn't really understand because with all due respect, the code is a bit more important than the tests. Oh, so you just add test cases with a test keyword. And then it's std testing expect. And it's just assertions, basically. Okay, cool. Test um, string length, for example. And I need an allocator for this. Where could I get an allocator from? Uh, does the um, I, I, in the back of my mind, I recall that the testing module had a testing allocator. Yeah, right. The, that is the, the std heap test allocator. Is that what I want? This one should not try alignments that exceed what cmalloc can handle. Come on. Um, give me like some a little bit better documentation allocator in tests how can I get an allocator there std oh so you just create an allocator for uh, surely there's an easier way to do this So within the test testing module, is there not an allocator? Yeah, allocator instance. Is this uh, is this initialized? Can I use this? STD testing allocator instance base allocator instance. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
see documentation on this would be very nice because uh, of course that tells me nothing but I guess we can use the test data data okay so let's do a var um, ASCII string is a string dot allocate and we want to maybe just test hello world and of course I want to try is that the correct error handling mechanism inside a test what did they use in the in the standard patterns one um, yeah they try so if I can I, I just can return errors inside tests I do test declarations the implicit type is the error union type any error void and it cannot be changed okay cool mm -hmm. report memory leak Oh, I can use std testing allocator. Okay, that that's that is exactly what I wanted. std testing allocator, and then I want to defer ASCII string dot dnit with the std testing allocator, and then I want to maybe create a second string which is a Unicode string and at some point we might want to um, further optimize the string implementation for example there's something called small string uh, small string optimization where I, um, because uh, small strings are strings that of course only consist of a few characters and it is possible to basically put these on the stack because if we heap allocate a string, then we need to store the pointer on the stack. And if the entire string is smaller than this single pointer, then we don't need to actually allocate it. And instead, we um, just put the data inside the pointer. Of course, this only works for very small um, strings, but this is something that we could eventually want to do. I'm looking to see if I can find a nice visualization. And it turns out not really. Yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't matter for now. Doesn't matter at all. Mm. Yeah, right, this one. Uh, we basically have a union, which is either a buffer of 16 characters. Um, 16. Not sure why it's, all right. Um, or it is a, a pointer to the heap buff. And then we have the string length and reserved size and etc. Et it doesn't matter for now. I don't know why I went off topic here, but who cares? Okay, um, let's try and put this nice um, this nice uh, umbrella in there. And uh, maybe uh, look, it's an umbrella. Okay. And then I want to std debug assert. Oh, I think there's an expect equal. Expect, yeah, SDD testing expect equal, and that's probably what I want to do. Expect equal, um, the ASCII string dot dot did I call it length? I hope I did. Um, yeah, it is length, okay, and that should be equal to. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, 
for 12 characters. Um, 12. And then the Unicode string. Yeah, maybe let's, let's get rid of the text. It's a bit silly and doesn't really add any quality to the test. Um, how about we add just another character? Um, uh, Unicode lobster. Let's add a lobster emoji. At all. Okay, so this should be two code points, I believe. Um, assuming that this umbrella is not a multi character code point, which those exist, and those are the reason that we differentiate between code points and characters, but I hope this should be two. Um, so, a forensic test. That expects a source file argument. Why do we get an integer overflow? What? None of this is in my code. Is it the fault of. Wait, it is crashing in kernel? It's crashing in the kernel? That is very suspicious um, is this due to my test it's my fault um, that's a little suspicious let's just try and run it with source uh, string dot sig yeah right um, so I need to try here, because these don't panic, they return errors. Um, UTF eight code. Yes, I need to use self.bytes.items. Okay. That's another thing about SIG. I, I, I assume it speeds up compilation quite a lot, but um, as you've seen, the length function existed for quite a while and it had an error in it. But we didn't notice that error unless we actually um, used that function somewhere. So it didn't even get compiled unless we, we used it, which um, is probably useful. But on debug builds, at least, I believe it might be nice to turn that off if possible. Either way, expected optional type found. Um, we are in here. And why does this does return the users, right? The UTF eight count code points. UTF eight count code points. Yeah returns an error or a u size. Is that not how you unwrap errors in Zig? Oh, it's an optional type. Okay, so how do you unwrap an error? Because um, what I did here is uh, optional unwrapping, but we want error unwrapping. How do I unwrap an error? I want to make it clear to the compiler that this is not possible catch oh it's it's catch unreachable catch unreachable all one tests passed very nice um so this of course implicitly also tests the allocation and then i believe the code points, it probably don't need to test those. Mm. Yeah, I, I don't think we need to test them for now because that's basically just calling the standard library function. And I assume that the standard library is broken as we've seen here. Uh, 
maybe some stuff is indeed broken because this does not seem correct and I don't see any code that touches my code. So it might be that that's just a bug in the zig compiler, which is very possible because of course um, I'm not using the stable release, which is 0 0.10. I'm using the um, bleeding edge release, which is 0 0.11. Actually, let's look at zig version quickly. Yeah, you can see it's the developer version. So quite possible that uh, that is a bug that might get fixed before the next release. I might report it if I have the time to investigate it further. Okay, very nice. Um, mm -hmm. Something else that we might want to do is add a string view because um, the string might not own its data. And it, it might just um, um, be a slice into the UTF-8. So it would be on character boundaries and it, it would be guaranteed to contain valid UTF-8, but it wouldn't actually own the data and you couldn't deallocate it. And I did see a um, UTF-8 view thing in here. So what is that? Iterates the code points. Hmm. Oh, that is how you get a UTF-8 iterator. So why the abstraction? Why do I, what's the point of this? Does it validate it? I mean, that's, that's useless for us, right? Um, UTF-8 view dot bytes equals S and then the iterator. Yeah, okay, uh, this struct seems pretty useless to me except for maybe the init compile time I guess mm. do we want that uh, do we want a compile time string type that could be useful for like uh, keywords in certain languages mm. another thing why does this this code block this doesn't even have syntax highlighting why? Um, <laughs> Either way, um, I think we've made quite decent progress. We've implemented a basic string type, which is quite nice, that we can use inside the tokenizer. And I will probably adapt this some other way. Or maybe I can actually do it right now. I don't think it would be too hard. Yeah, let, let's actually do it right now. Okay. Mm. This method takes ownership of the provided box. Okay, and we assume that yeah, let's, let's import the string first. String is at import string dot dot string, and then we want the oh um the reader. Should not should that be an exclu exclusively a string reader? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not I'm not sure what's an nice way to do this um, I want basically an iterator that I can I can revert right 
because I want to reconsume at some point and I'm not sure if the reader is the best option for this. Okay, let's let's think about this. Okay, let's correct this. This method does not take ownership. And it also does not worry about encoding. We want a string. Right? Or rather, we want a pointer to a string. We don't want to own that string. And then the reader could um, have that source and leave the rest uninitialized. And then the reader could basically buffer the position a little because um, in many states we want to revert to a previous state. So the reader needs to remember the previous um, state of the ETF iterator. Okay, so this also needs to import string. Const string is at import string.sig. String and then um, or do we want no no we want a previous position and this is used to reconsume the previous character. And or should we make it more abstract? I think I should make, yeah, right. I need an abstraction layer here. I can basically get rid of the entire reader and add an iterator layer at a um, reconsuming iterator. Yeah, that's, that's a lot better. Okay, so I want an iterator over some items. Yeah, okay. So let's actually completely get rid of reader.sig. Or rather, first, maybe it's, let's commit this. Uh, let's make it run again. <laughs> it does run. Okay. Um, Let's remove this for now. Okay, it, it still builds and runs. And now let's um, quit this. Let's add source string.sig and add source. Yeah, let's add the entire source. Then let's commit this. In tokenizer, add a UTF-8 string type. This is basically a byte buffer that is gar guaranteed to only contain valid UTF-8. Yeah, I think that's good enough for now. We don't need to, to write uh, too much. And then let's get rid of the reader.sig. A new function. Um, maybe iterators. Let's see, and this can then contain some iterator. Or rather, that maybe the standard library has some iterator utilities. Iterator. Unmanaged iterator. Okay, so it, it contains a lot of different iterators, but I don't see a iterator that allows me to buffer the previous item. That's not a thing. Okay, um, so let's add a pub function 
um, re reconsuming iterator, and this needs a type, needs an item, which is a type, and a an iterator, which is also it. No, an iterator could be any type. And then it returns another type. And we return a struct. And the struct contains the previous item field. Oh, actually, I don't need the. Yeah, I don't even need this. Adds a single buffer, single item buffer to an iterator to allow reconsuming the used item once. Um, okay, so this would be now we're getting in deep into the zig generics. This is fun. Okay, so we need the type of type of we want the return to so we assume that uh, hmm. the Unicode iterator. How does that um, the UTF eight iterator? has a next code point function. I wanted to have a next next function. Mm -hmm. So how do I if there's not a general abstraction over mm. Ah this is this is kind of ugly. Do I need to give it a function pointer then? Uh, right. What's what the type of a function? How can I pass pass a function? Um, can be declared with any type, of course. Okay, so how do I pass a function as an argument? <laughs> so I'll only find behavior. Sick pass function as argument. Returns a file, but file type is which was a writer. Okay. Um, But I just want to give a function to the function as an argument. Okay, um, I'm kind of running out of time here. So I will leave this for another video. And this is also something that I have to, to think about conceptually a bit because it's not that simple to develop a nice iterator API because of course I don't only need the iterator API for the tokenizer, I want to use it for quite a lot of things. Um, which is why I think it's quite annoying that this function is called next code point 
because otherwise I could just assume that every iterator has a next function. But if every iterator names the function differently, then of course it's kind of useless. Maybe I'll also have to do some more research on iterator patterns in Zig because I assume I'm not the first one to, to think about this. But like I said, I think I'll leave this for another video. So um, once again, hope you had fun. Maybe you learned something. I definitely learned a lot about Zig. And I'll see you again later.